Hi, I'm Greg from Motorsports Innovations, and today I'm going to talk about the IQ3 Dash. I've actually installed one in my own dragster, and I uh, thought that would be a good way to document uh, some of the different features and how you program it. Uh, the, the, the Dash comes from Race Pack, set up for a road racing kind of deal, and so for drag racing we, we want to change it to some other sensor uh, setups, and so we'll go through that and how to work the backlight and some of the programming screens. So, in a typical IQ3 installation, there would be two momentary push buttons that we'd use, button one and button two, to do various programming tasks, one of which is the backlight that we would use in drag racing, and another one is changing screens. But to make it a little bit cooler installation, I've selected this momentary toggle switch that's dual pole that will actually be both buttons for our installation. So the first thing I'll show is being button two, which will toggle for our different screens. So I have one screen programmed how I'm going to use it, or maybe how I'm going to use it, uh, but to show the drag racing look. And one screen is programmed still in a road race mode. So this is screen one, and I'll just toggle the switch one time quickly. And now I'm on screen two, which is a road race kind of orientation. And we're going to program that screen, number two, to have a drag race look to show you all how that works. So if I toggle again, I go back to screen one, screen two, and so on, because out of the four possible screens, I only have two programmed. So next we'll do the backlight. Let's see if I can do this right. I practiced six times and only got it right once. The backlight is button one, which would be left side on my little toggle switch. So touch it for two blinks and it goes into setup one. Notice I, I said two blinks and that's something I should have explained earlier. Um, the number of blinks uh, determines what mode you're in with the buttons. It takes a little getting used to but it works pretty slick. So yes I want to be in setup one and the first thing in setup one is backlight. So maybe moving from uh, day racing to night racing, I might want to go to extremely bright. Whoops, I went right past uh, 9 to 0, which of course is very dull. And moving on up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I think I arrived at 6 was pretty good, or maybe that's the factory default. Uh, move the button to the left, and whoops, how about to the right? Okay, one of these will save it. There it is, saving settings. I told you I didn't know how to do it. Pretty cool features with the IQ3. And now we'll go to the laptop and do the setup of that screen number two. First thing we'll do is we'll navigate to the data link program. Get that loaded up. We'll go to file. Open car configuration. I'll pick my last car configuration that I use for testing, which is X2. Say OK. I'll go to Edit. This will be for a new installation that you guys would be doing. And I'll do Read VNet Config, which will find all the sensors that are in this configuration, and it'll find the IQ3 dash. Okay, it's found all the devices. We're going to say OK. We'll go in my collection of buttons for all my sensors, this particular car, and the IQ3 is right there. We'll right click on that, and up comes the programming screen that we have to change the settings. Now you'll notice that program, the screen one I already have programmed. So we'll go to screen two. And we'll take this Excel and we'll disable it. It's their G meter. We'll take calculated gear because we don't care what gear we're in, we're drag racers. Lap time, we'll change that to be lagger volts. Where are you, lagger volts? Lagger 
volts. I'm going to change the text to say volts. And I'm going to change the resolution to it already was one decimal place. So we'll stay with that. Okay, we have boost. We're going to change that to oil pressure. Actually, we're cheating a little bit. We're going to take the boost pressure sensor. We're going to change the resolution to full digit, no decimal places. But we're going to call it oil because this particular car configuration does not have an oil pressure sensor on it. I hope that's not confusing. But it shows you the power. You can label things, literally anything. This manifold temperature, we're going to change that to water temperature. And we're going to cheat the same way with it. We're going to use manifold temperature. That's what it already was. We're going to change the tag to say water. Actually, just for fun, we'll say beer. And the last one we're going to change to fuel. And in this car has pump pressure 0 to 75 for EFI fuel pressure. And uh, we'll change that to fuel pressure. If I could spell. I just made it fuel press and I just ran it all together. Okay, so we've made some changes and it's very easy to change them and, and get them the way you want them. And we're going to do send configuration to send this out to the IQ3. We'll click on OK again down here in the configuration section. And we'll move up here and we'll say save which will save the configuration information on the laptop. So we're going to dim the screen a little bit before we go into our screen too. We're going to change it to, I think I decided three was good for the video camera. Saving settings. So we've got the drag race configuration that I had programmed earlier in screen number one. Screen number two was the road race, but now we'll toggle over to two. And two was the screen that we programmed earlier. So, of course, we've got beer here, which is important to us drag racers. And I had forgotten to change uh, the mile per hour up here to RPM, but that's easy enough to redo. So it just gives you a feel for how easy it is to update the IQ3 dash. Go back here to screen one. Excuse me, there we go again. There's screen number one, which is programmed kind of correctly, except that I was cheating with the sensors. That's because I'm upgrading my car to a V300 and it still has a sportsman with a limited channels in it right now. One of the cool features I mentioned before about the IQ3 dash are the warning lights. Let me flick those manually, which we saw before when we were programming. I can't do it with low oil pressure because I have no motor in the car. And that's probably one of the main ones most of us will want to program. Oil pressure below 20 pounds or whatever number we would choose. Easy enough to program in that uh, programming screen that we used before. I'll probably do a high EGT and possibly some, something with boost. I know with my car, if I'm not at 15 pounds of boost, uh, when it drops to the lower RPM after the shift with the power glide, uh, I'm not going to go 660. 
So me being a top dragster bracket racer guy, uh, it's nice for me to know uh, if I'm on a good run or a not so good run. Uh, probably the, uh, the Sun guys would want to have boost. Um, um, fuel pressure we already have. I guess a low fuel pressure could be an interesting warning light for a nitrous guy. Uh, a lot of nitrous guys want to show the bottle pressure on the screen. Uh, high or low on bottle pressure uh, could be a warning light. Uh, so you could purge it down if you're sitting in the lanes or, or sitting in the water because they shut you off and you need to repurge. That would be a good tool to use as well. So I'm looking forward to the uh, 2011 racing season with the IQ3 and the V300 and some of the other upgrades I've done for my car. Let me know if I can help you out with an IQ3 or any other race pack stuff. Greg from Motorsports Innovations, 609-265-2110. Thanks.